1986, a cool, crisp, star-filled sky looks down upon the incredible Louisiana Superdome, America's greatest indoor sports arena. Within the dome are a pair of star-filled football teams set to battle in the 52nd annual Sugar Bowl. This is New Orleans, home city of the South's greatest sports classic, welcoming to its heart the volunteers of Tennessee, champions of the Southeastern Conference, and the Miami Hurricanes, second ranked of all the football teams in America for the 1985 season. The Hurricanes enter the Sugar with a 10-1 record and a very real shot at the national championship. Tennessee, guided superbly by coach Johnny Majors, was champion of the rugged SEC in 1985, in spite of having lost its starting quarterback midway through the season. For Miami and for coach Jimmy Johnson, the 52nd Sugar was a first-time visit to the Crescent City and a second straight bowl trip for the Canes under their brilliant young coach. The anthem has lifted the patriotic spirits of a sold-out Superfilm crowd, and nearly 78,000 eager fans await the kickoff. From the Superdome in New Orleans, January 1st, 1986, it's the 52nd annual Sugar Bowl Classic. The Sugar Bowl presents highlights of the game between the Tennessee Volunteers and the Miami Hurricanes. Coach Jimmy Johnson leads the highly ranked Hurricanes onto the Mardi Gras turf of the Superdome, possibly just a win away from a second national championship in a remarkable three-year span. Tennessee storms onto the Superdome turf, the Cinderella squad of the tough Southeastern Conference, a typical Johnny Majors coach squad, speed and football savvy opponent. Referee Wendell Shelton assembles the captains, asks the visiting Canes to call the toss. Miami wins and elects to defer to the second half. Tennessee will receive the kickoff from junior kicker Mark Seeley. Seeley's kick sails into the end zone, where it's down by senior halfback Jeff Powell. The 50-second Sugar's first play from scrimmage is a foretaste of things to come. Tennessee's senior quarterback, Darrell Dickey, passing complete to split end Eric Swanson for six yards. The Vols were held in three plays, however, setting up this 41-yard punt. A punt that's almost blocked. The kicker is Bob Garman. Brett Perriman takes it in at the Miami 40 and he returns 12 yards to the Volunteer 48-yard line. Miami's outstanding quarterback, Vinny Testaverde, brings the Canes to the line, but he's greeted by a deafening crowd noise and calls for time. As play resumes, Testaverde will send halfback Warren Williams up the middle for nine yards. Straight up the center run. The foul defense holds and sets up a fourth and five for Miami at the Tennessee 43. Jeff Fiegels is in punt formation. But the Canes cross up the Vols and everyone else in the dome with a fake. Mel Bratton gets the snap and he carries the 25 surprising yards to the volunteer 18 yard line. First and ten, Miami. Testaverde has somewhat quieted the volunteer crowd. And now he calmly finds flanker Michael Irvin wide open in the end zone. The Canes make the drive look awfully easy, and they're up six to nothing. point after there's a five-yard penalty. Now they're set with Greg Cox in the kicking position. His point after is good, and it's Miami 7, Tennessee 0, with 11 minutes remaining in the first quarter. The 
Late in the first quarter, Miami again with the ball. First and 10 at the Kane 41. Tennessee's defense begins to create the pattern of play for this New Year's night. Manhandling the vaulted Miami passing game. There's Andrew Kramer breaking up this test of bomb intended for Mike Irvin. And on this third and 24 situation from the Hurricane 27, the All-American candidate is sacked by 263-pound defensive tackle Richard Brown, a senior from Riviera, Florida. Miami loses 14 on the sack, and Jeff Beagles is in punt formation at his own 13. It's a 41-yarder. And it's taken in by sophomore Andre Creamer. And it's returned 13 yards to the Miami 41. Tennessee with the ball. Third and three at the Canes 34. Darrell Dickey finds junior wide receiver Joey Klinkscales open for five and a first down. Dickey passing a game, this time to senior wide receiver Tim McGee. The game is for 22, and it's first and goal Tennessee at the Miami 7. The first quarter ends with Miami leading 7 zip. First play, second quarter. First and goal. Dickey comes out pitching. This one complete for a Tennessee touchdown to senior tight end Jeff Smith. Dickey had to contain a vigorous Miami rush to get the pass off, and Smith is all alone in the end zone. Here's a ground-level replay of Tennessee's first touchdown. Dickey showing the ability to scramble. And Jeff Smith giving lessons on how to bow politely in the end zone to a delighted Tennessee crowd. Junior place kicker Carlos Reves as always, on the mark with the point after, and Tennessee has tied Miami 7-7. Here's the kickoff. Miami on the move. Good return, but a penalty sets Miami back. They can't regain the momentum. On a first and 10 from the Miami 48, fullback Alonzo Highsmith will sweep the left side. But he's hit by sophomore tackle Mark Hovannik and fumbles. Hovannik recovers, but the Canes feel the ball was down when the fumble took place. Tennessee defense continues to shine on Miami's next series. Here's halfback Darrell Oliver on a left side sweep, but he's dropped for a loss by Richard Brown. On the very next play, Testaverde will step back into the pocket and find more trouble. A 21-yard sacking from outside linebacker Dale Jones. Yet another Miami second quarter series. First and 10 at the Miami 12. Testaverde passing long to split end Brian Blades, but it's broken up nicely by defensive back Dick Peppers, a sophomore. Third and six from his 16. Testaverde passing again, this time for Willie Smith. But Andre Kramer is playing the defensive game of his life, and he almost intercepts. Tennessee's ball now, first and 10 at the 50. 
Senior running back Jeff Powell will get the call. And he gains six yards at left tackle. Miami will extend the game by 15 more yards with a personal foul call. Third and six for the Volunteers at the Miami 25. Darrell Dickey calls Powell's number again, and the Nashville native gains 16 more up the middle, setting up first and goal from the nine. Powell gets the call again and carries to the Miami one. He's given a tough hit by linebacker George Myra Jr., and he fumbles into the end zone where Tim McGee alertly recovers for a Tennessee touchdown. Here's a replay of a good run, a good tackle, and an opportune Tennessee recovery. Volunteer on the spot. Braves is once again true to form. And the Volunteers, very surprisingly, are out in front of the favorite Hurricanes, 14 to 7. It's late in the second quarter now, and the Tennessee defensive plan continues to excel. On a second and three at the Volunteer 26, Testaverde's pass is batted down at the line by 272-pound sophomore tackle Richard Cooper. First and 10 at the Volunteer 20. Testaverde. Throwing for running back Mel Bratton in the end zone. But Vic Peppers is there to defend. And now a promising Miami drive is all but snuffed out on this play as Testaverde comes face to face with linebacker Dale Jones and a 17-yard sack. The first half ends in Miami frustration with a Tennessee lead of 14 to 7. The Sugar Bowl crowd settles back for a delightful halftime extravaganza presented by the competing university bands. Miami's marching unit is directed by Dr. William B. Russell. They're first onto the field. Known as the band of the hour, the Floridians present a flawless musical pageant. Southland completes the halftime presentation. Under the direction of Dr. J. Julian, the man who has led Tennessee's musical sounds for 24 consecutive years, the Tennessee band presents a musical tribute to America and a special treat to the Sugar Bowls with the appearance of Tennessee-born composer Lee Greenwood. Mr. Greenwood sang his renown, Born in the USA, and it was truly a halftime to remember. Carlos Reves kicks off for Tennessee to start the 52nd Sugar Bowl second half action. Halfback J.C. Penny takes it in at the end zone, but he gets a short return to the Miami 10, where he's stopped by Terry McDaniel. A 
assistant coach Ken Donahue's defensive game plan continues to dominate the Sugar Bowl. Here on a second and six at the Miami 41, Testaverde again feels the heat, coming this time from inside linebacker Darren Miller. It's third and 16. Testaverde is met by big Richard Brown. And he fumbles. Darren Miller recovers, and Tennessee is in business deep in Miami territory. First and 10 for Tennessee at the Hurricanes 31. Darryl Dickey continues to have a remarkable night, quarterbacking his equally remarkable offensive buddies. He hits Tim McGee for 15, and a first down at the Miami 16. Third and nine from the Hurricane 15. Dickey passing again, and again to Tim McGee. It's good for 12 yards. We set up second and goal from the one. Junior running back, Sam Henderson gets the call over left guard. Touchdown, Tennessee. Here's another look at Tennessee's third Sugar Bowl touchdown. A power run behind power blocking. Followed by some polished high fives. Raves, again, accurately towing the mark. It's good, and Tennessee now leads 21 to seven. Raves kicking off. J.C. Penny deep for the Hurricanes. Penny takes the ball in at the goal, and he gets a nice 27-yard return. But again, Miami self-destructs with a holding violation this time. We set up third and 10 for Miami from their 10-yard line. After two passes failed to gain, Testaverde attempts to cross up the volunteer defense with this quarterback draw. But he fumbles. He's hit by strong safety Chris White, and the Hurricanes are forced to punt. Jeff Beagles gets off this 41-yarder Fair card at the Tennessee 40 by Kramer. Darrell Dickey sets the Tennessee offense for its most exciting play of the evening. It's a handoff to Jeff Power, and the Nashville senior heads up the middle, then cuts left, and from then on, it's pure speed and a 60-yard touchdown carry. A replay of Jeff Powell's most memorable moment as a Tennessee volunteer. Reves, who by the way hails from Miami, Florida, drives another stake in his hometown's coffin with his fourth point after. The score is now Tennessee 28, Miami 7, with seven minutes left in the third quarter. Three minutes remain in the third period as the Vols line up for a punt from their 22-yard line. 
Bob Garman's 51-yard punt is nearly blocked. Brett Perryman takes it in at his 27, and he gets an 11-yard return. Miami prepares for a determined offensive drive. Vinny Testaverde on first and 10. Testaverde throwing. Complete to Perriman for 20 yards to the Tennessee 42-yard line. Testaverde passing again. And again, finding Perryman open, this time for 11, and a first down at the Volunteer 31-yard line. Andre Kramer makes the stop. The Heisman candidate is throwing again for Perryman. This one to the 10, but it's broken up. However, the Volunteers are called for interference, and Miami has a first down at the Tennessee 16-yard line. Bend, but don't break, is the Vol defensive approach. Testaverde loses five on first down as Mark Hovannik makes the sack. Second and 15 from the 21. Testaverde passing. Complete to his tight end, Willie Smith. But a flag is thrown on the Hurricanes for offensive interference. 15 yards and a loss of down. And it will set Miami back to the Tennessee 36-yard line. And now the drive gets totally thwarted as Testaverde will be sacked again. This time by 258-pound sophomore middle guard Fred Bennett, who literally ran right over his blocker. The third quarter comes to an end as a horde of screaming vowel fans salute a 28-7 lead. Fourth quarter action now. Tennessee playing a third and 20 at the Miami 45. Dickey passing for Joey Klinkscales. But it's intercepted by freshman defensive back Don Ellis at the Miami two-yard line. A determined Vinny Testaverde tries again to get his Hurricanes back into the Sugar Bowl. From deep in his end zone, he lets loose with a long one, finding flanker Mike Irvin open down the east sideline. A 45-yard gain. The Miami drive falters at the Hurricane 47. On a fourth and seven, Fiegels is back to punt. But again, the Canes resort to the unexpected. The ball is snapped to Mel Bratton. Bratton runs right for 10 yards. A replay of Miami's first quarter switcheroo. From the Tennessee 40 on first and 10. Testaverde will continue to be harassed by the Tennessee defense. Big Richard Cooper chases the Miami quarterback out of bounds at the 50. But Tennessee will be flagged 15 yards for illegal participation, and Miami will get another shot. A pass interference call against the Vols puts Miami in play first and 10 at the 10-yard line. Testaverde is passing for Perryman, but linebacker Darren Miller will intercept at the two-yard line, and it would prove to be Miami's last shot at tightening up the Sugar Bowl. Seven and a half minutes remain in the game. Miami has a second and three at the Volunteer 36. Testaverde passing for Mel Bratton, but free safety Chris White steps in front of the Tennessee 28 and returns 68 yards all the way down to the Miami four yard line.
Here's a replay of the game's most exciting defensive action. A one-handed tip and intercept by the senior defensive back from Cleveland, Tennessee, Chris White. On third and goal, the Volunteers complete a totally unexpected route of the favorite Hurricanes as sophomore running back Charles Wilson sweeps the right side for six yards and the fifth Tennessee touchdown of the game. And it's followed by Carlos Reves' fifth point after. Reves kicks off. J.C. Penny takes it in at the Miami 3. Penny returns 42 yards to the Miami 45-yard line. Miami tries a new quarterback, junior Jock Toretto, but his luck is no different. On a second and 10 from the Tennessee 30, this pass is intercepted by Charles Davis at the Tennessee 15-yard line. It's all over but the shout. On the game's final play, Rami Hawkins carries for three. The final seconds tick off in the Louisiana Superdome, and the scoreboard will tell it all quite clearly. The Tennessee Volunteers, 35. The Miami Hurricanes, 7. The 52nd Sugar Bowl Classic is history. Tennessee has won an incredible victory. The Volunteer defense superbly shuts down one of college football's greatest passing attacks. It's a great victory for coach Johnny Majors and his staff. And for quarterback Darrell Dickey, who started the season as a second stringer, he completes a truly remarkable college career by being voted the game's most outstanding player. <laughs>